It's that time again for Zoo Zizzly, and today we are going to bring in the wonderful and cute little koala. The koala, though, is going to be the second implementation of the Australian animals into our Italian zoo project. Now, you guys have voted for this one more or less by typing uh, a lot of comments into my last video's comment section, with especially the koala and the kangaroo making a, a big impression on me. However, the koala was actually planned anyhow, so it was a, a very simple uh, head nutting on, on my side uh, to bring this in but today I'm going to talk you through the hard times of actually realizing in this thing. Um, first things first, I am absolutely stoked about the end result. It is by far the best thing in this zoo, at least in my opinion, because it just really sets sails for what, what is going on in the in the whole series, I think. Um, and also, sorry for my voice, it's cracking a little bit. I am not entirely sure what it is. I'm feeling good, but the last couple of days, um, the weather has been uh, a roller coaster, I shall say, and today it was like 25 degrees or something. Um, and I might have had, uh, at, at a certain occasion, maybe I wore a little bit too little cloth or too many, I have no idea, but my... You know, my throat is uh, having a little hard time here. However, uh, we're going to make this. And <laughs> also, um, I have to say that this build is maybe a little confusing at times. I had to do a lot of research. And I had to do a little bit of trial and error. Now, <clears throat> up until this point, I was partially using the free build mod that was working in the previous version of Planet Zoo. It hasn't yet been updated to the newest version of the game, which is the 1.11. Point two or something like that. It was like a hot fix as well, um, but it's not like working anymore, and that means I needed to change a couple of little things to make this actually work. Um, you know, mostly as you can see here in the middle, this little restaurant area um, is having a couple of issues, um, but we are going to sort them out anyhow. So it's going to be easy now. Speaking of issues, I wanted to make this little corner building over here um, somewhat like a little bit of a. It's not really a taverna. It's 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 been planned as a taverna first but then i thought you know what it's so much at the beginning of the zoo i wouldn't want to have like a proper taverna or like restaurant over here i just want to have like a little gift slash like goodies shop with a couple of food and drinks and snacks you know just so you can grab certain things and then just move on into the zoo but equally at the same time this building should have been or it should be the um indoor section for the koala so at the back of the uh, shops there's going to be the koala um, habitation uh, in which they can live in the boxes and stuff blah blah you'll, you'll see that during the video now this put me um, actually against a couple of issues that I wasn't really aware of because uh, many things I've done in this uh, corner over here turned out to be rather complicated um, the first things first uh, it, it was the roof now I went for like a very classic like Mediterranean building shape. Um, it's somewhat of like a half L shape, um, which is really down to some of the Roman buildings, which use also like a little bit of an L shape. And then having some of the roofs, which uh, use these um, terracotta tiled roof typey things. But I wanted to make them a different color. And then I, you know, I just figured our roof pieces are way too big. And without having the, the chance to use free build in order to manipulate them in a different way, um, I needed to make like a, a little bit of a combination of uh, custom roofs and in-game roofs. Now, the, the final result is kind of cool, even though I have to say... It is somewhat of a workaround um, of what I wanted to do actually and I still have to figure out how I'm going to do more intricate like little villa buildings in the future like these typical Mediterranean little villa buildings we will have a lot throughout this zoo um, as they just offer a certain appeal and a certain thing um, just as like shelters and stuff like that. I still have to find out how I'm going to use them in the best way possible. But I'm very confident we are going to find a good way. But obviously I wanted to also bring in a lot of plants, a lot of overhanging plants. And I'm still having a hard time finding the right overhanging plants. I know from certain people in the community that there are a couple of cool plants that they can use for like hanging or like, you know... Um, these type of plants but the problem is most of them might not go together with the Mediterranean um, style I'm doing over here so I have to find my own way which actually is a cool challenge but at this point I was struggling a lot with a lot of finding the right pieces finding the right plants finding the right everything in effect you know actually everything now it was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun but it took way way longer than i expected now this episode over here um again sucked in uh, very much 10 hours or something 
uh, not even counting research in. And this is also why there wasn't any episode else uh, this week. Um, I had prepared the first two episodes before the DLC actually launched. And then, um, yeah, there was a big drain in between because I was working on this episode. And uh, I have actually planned out a couple more things for the future episodes, which I'm going to talk about a bit more in the real-time part. But I have to say that you know, the the problem was that I wanted to really achieve something in this main plaza that is the more or less translation of the style into the zoo. So that whenever you enter the plaza, you will know what this is going to be like. And therefore, I had to ensure that everything looks exactly the way I wanted it to and I had it in mind. And Honestly, this takes a long, long time when you're not too used to the theme. Uh, but yeah, we are bringing in so many new variants of fences, as you can see right now, building on screen. We are bringing in a lot of different um, little elements that we can use throughout the, the foliage and the nature part of it, like just rock formations, um, combinations of plants, and just in general, the choice of plants. And these things are so mega important because you want to have these kind of things as icons for your zoo. You want to have these things to have a, a storyline that, you know, a red line, so to say, that drags through the whole zoo. Um, oh, by the way, speaking of a red line, I think I haven't talked about that. I have talked about the main reasons why this is going to be a special zoo, but I think one thing I haven't really talked about is the fact that I wanted to make this like a guided zoo. Now, what I mean by that is that usually we had, like, Yosemite is super confusing. Yosemite Valley is a proper organic zoo, but in order to make, like, a tour, it is nearly impossible because it, it almost equals a... Uh, a freaking Sudoku or something to to solve the way of having one tour that is a non-stop tour and covers everything in a zoo. It's basically impossible without going back, forth and back. And in this zoo, I wanted to ensure that you can actually do this, that you have one proper journey through the zoo. That said, I will intentionally not do this with like continents or animal type relations, um, which would make sense in when considering a lot of arguments, but then again, this, the, the biggest problem of that is that it limits my freedom ever so much that I feel like I have put myself a lot of restrictions for this project, which is great, but I don't want to have this additional restriction to focus on specific areas. And when there is a new animal or a different animal that I just want to build, that I don't have the chance to do that because I have to follow, like, for example, the fact that we are in the big cat area or we are in the northern area or whatnot, um, that would limit myself too much. And so I decided to go with a guided tour um, that has a couple of things going on. But then again, the type of animal is mainly down to what I want to do next and what fits in and, you know, these type of things. And obviously, I'll try to have the backstages kind of connected so that they make sense, but they can make sense with different types of animals. So sometimes I might be restricted to a certain well, group of animals, let's put it that way, um, simply because of the restriction of the area I have set myself to, but not like per definition of the project. And so I think this is the this is a very good mixture of, of having something more guided. I don't even know if guided is the right wording, but something that is a lot more uh, easy to follow versus um, still having the freedom of putting different animals in whenever I want to. Uh, and I think that's a beautiful combination. Um, you can see also over here, I tried to put in some boxes where you can put the koalas in. I'm giving them like proper like climbing com you know uh, things and I, I just imagine these are like sleeping boxes you can open and close and just make sure that they have a good time and they're secured in there whenever there's like weather is not really playing whatever you want it to play um so yeah just you know having that kind of versatility to have that like a, a proper realistic indoor section i didn't make it too big like you know they have a huge outdoor section and um, this Mediterranean area will grant them a lot of time in the year. Um, uh, most of the months during the year will be good enough for them to be outside. And whenever it's pouring rain, they can either sit in the trees or just search for some different shelter or like go indoors. So that's the idea. And I didn't even want to make people be able to see what's in there. It's just like a proper backside area, full stop. Now, um, yeah, I think there's so much more I could talk about in this episode because it's it's been so much fun to experiment with all the pieces and just putting some backstage already in place. I, I will most likely also um, make some blueprints uh, for backstage areas that we can use throughout the entire zoo because it's it's starting to get repetitive after a while. And so I'm just like, have a couple of things as a palette of different backstage areas we can put in every now and then. Um, it's kind of great. And then maybe in between we can do a proper 
backstage experiment or whatever. Uh, so that would be nice. But all over the place, I think I'm going to focus on the habitat creation uh, mostly in the videos. But, you know, I'm, I'm very happy. I'm just very happy. And I'm also very happy about the fact that this is on its own already looking so different from what I've done in the past. I mean, the, the last episode and the episode before have already brought in a very new feeling, even though I have to say entrances is something I have done quite a lot for many, many zoos and many, many theme parks <laughs> I have started, um, many of which I have never finished, but <laughs> you know, truth to be, to be told, like I, I've done a lot of entrances. That is a, a realistic thing that happens when you start new projects, right? Uh, but I haven't done too many exits. Okay, that's that's a bad segue. Whatever, you know, I haven't used them too often for visiting the full park. In any case, um, I think the last episode already gave you a good experience uh, of what this different journey could be like with your favorite camel on YouTube. I hope I am, by the way. Is there a different camel on YouTube? I hope there's not. And if so, what are you doing? Um, but in any case, I wanted to give you really a super different project to follow and to binge watch and to just enjoy. Um, maybe like a lot of people uh, that just joined the channel recently. First of all, hi, welcome. Um, thank you very much for being a part now. But also, um, I hope you guys are going to enjoy this series now from the beginning. I even hope you might catch up on Yosemite Valley now if you haven't already, because that's more or less a very good show showcase of, of what this project might look like in the future in terms of um, yeah, just overall context, overall storytelling, overall build quality and overall like completeness, is that even a word? Uh, completion of the project? I don't know. Level of completion might be the word that you would use in that case. Um, so that's a good, that's a very good point uh, to do for those who joined or maybe even haven't caught up on Yosemite. Um, but I wanted to give you a project that is super different from Yosemite, that is super different from the usual builds I've done. And I think this habitat in particular over here uh, is already super different from what I usually do. It, it plays a lot more with um, incline and the, and the capability of making a different level habitat to also, and that's a very important um, factor about this project in general, to incorporate some realism aspects. Now, koalas don't like to be shouted at too much and uh, they don't want to be in the midst of a noisy plaza, but this habitat is next to a big plaza. So I had to find a solution, find a solution um, to make sure that these little guys are not too stressed all of the time. So what I did is I made sure that they go down into their little area and once they climb up the trees, they will be able to be seen by the guests, but they are sitting in their comfortable trees in which they feel safe. Um, so that's something like using their natural habitat as an element of reduction of uh, re yeah well reduction of stress is i guess the the right term for that so overall i'm uh, extremely happy with that idea and also how it turned out you will see in the real time part later on how cool that looks from the eye level of people because you don't really walk towards a habitat you walk over a plaza and you don't notice in the at the first glance that this is a habitat because you you only see the top of the trees but you have to really get closer to it and then you might actually be able to spot some of the koalas in the trees which is kind of cool like it's a little bit of an experience and then you just start noticing that there is actually a habitat and you have really to go close to the fence to be able to look down uh, into the habitat area which again was an idea to ensure that this, these little guys uh, have a stress-free uh, time, so to say. Now, I really hope how this turned out. Um, this building over here, just as a little disclaimer, it's not the final version of the interior. Like, it's it's basically a little bit of exploring of themes. Um, I haven't looked too much at the interior in Mediterranean areas and, and restaurants and stuff. I should have done that before building this, but... Um, this was only made for the episode now and also to make sure that we can have a little glimpse inside here. Yeah. There are a lot of things I like about what I've done here, but a, a lot of things I dislike from the interior. So I have to find out what I like and what I dislike in particular to make sure this is going to look like a lot more Mediterranean and Sicilian. I think this wall with the stones and the wine growing over there is pretty good already and having these plants in the little pots is really cool as well. But there are a couple of other elements that look a little bit too Asian to me, so I might have to change that. But overall, I'm a, I'm a big fan of this building. And I think we have now three different buildings that all have this Mediterranean vibe going on. But on their very own, they're all super different from each other. And I think this is very good to have as a little, you know, start to the series. 
I mean, it's episode three. It's still the start, isn't it? Yeah, so that's that. I can't really tell too much more now because the time is running off uh, or running out in this uh, speed build section. But you can see I'm putting down a couple of uh, decals here and there to make it look a bit more realistic, and which it does after a while. And that's the point where I have to give you and hand you over or hoof you over. Is that even a word? We can, we, I'm, I'm going to hoof you over to my dear friend, the future Rudy, or the real-time Rudy, as we call him here. Um, so enjoy that one, and I'll see you after the cut. So last time around, we ended up here on the Wombat Habitat. And you can see that um, if I turn around, well, there is a beautiful new area. And um, yeah, it took a lot longer than it might appear, uh, as I've already talked about in the actual uh, speed build. But you can see now that it was really worth it. Um, there are a couple of things I haven't done quite yet. So I'm not 100% happy with the interior quite yet. It's a kind of cozy little you know, area to get some stuff in, but there's like nothing in the background of these people. There needs to be some shelves and stuff. Uh, same goes over here. The signs need some actual, you know, names and stuff. And we need to just fill in everything. There are a couple of little menu cards over here. So, you know, a couple of little things. And actually, I love this. I love this view, but a couple of little details are actually missing. So um, we might move on. As you can tell, um, I enlarged this wall over here that you guys did praise quite a lot last time around, which um, I like the fact that you did. But now we move over and you can see this is the koala habitat. And I did a couple of things as I've talked about in the time lapse. Um, to make this a bit more engaging. So we have the house in here, so they're hidden away if they want some privacy and stuff. They can just go into the house, but uh, once they move out, they're not instantly hit by the people. Um, as you can see, there's one coming out of the house, by the way. Look at that. It's gonna go down the, the staircase now. It's look, looking a little bit funny, though, when, when they move down. Uh, in any case, if we go over, also you can see there are a couple of plants missing on top of these things. Um, but if they go down, and they have a lot of privacy from the more like busy plaza up here. Um, so the sound is diverged and all these kind of things. Uh, I, I try to keep in mind. Um, so as they go down, they're a bit more, you know, uh, free and uh, they don't have that like stress level. Um, and you can see they are walking down here. You have a nice view uh, down into the area and you can in fact go all the way down here, this little hill. And then when you turn around, you get this beautiful viewing area over here of the koala area. But in fact, as I said um, already quite often in, in some videos in the past with all the shade over here this is something you can't really put into a screenshot even though that looks quite majestic that wouldn't work as a screenshot um, I quite like this vista over here uh, I'm not gonna lie I like it a lot and the idea to have some shade over here is obviously to um, make sure that not only guests but also our little koala friends um, have the chance to chill down and relax a little bit in the sun um, I never knew that they're swimming by the way uh, I think it's all this always the same um, I remember that with the fires and you know in Australia I remember that they can actually swim but um, that's that you know that's the koala habitat there's really not that much to talk about um, it, it just took a long long time to plan it out it just took a long long time uh, to ensure that everything is in place and oh boy I just like it's so worth it because you can really tell with all the inclines and all the different height levels there's just so much more interaction in this build that it immediately feels so much more immersive and so much more real like just look at the the wall over here like with the stones in between and that like a little tree in the front and it just like speaks hopefully it speaks italian <laughs> but you know it's it's feeling really mediterranean to me um and so yeah that's what i've done now if you guys are still interested in that project and also other projects you might want to ensure to be here for the next episodes and also um make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because the next two episodes of zoo sicily will be absolutely legendary i have done two things actually i haven't done them fully but i have planned them out uh, two things that i haven't done before like both of them i haven't uh, one is going down memory lane of planet zoo totally and the other thing is just like kind of breaking some rules again uh, to do something still very realistic um but something that uh, i haven't done yet no one has done yet i guess i'm i'm not 100 sure i don't want to judge this by that i'm just a freaking fan of the idea so that's going to be the next episode and in any case, there's also our franchise mode re returning to the channel as well and some other cool things if my voice is going to make it <laughs> the next couple days. Um, so yeah, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I certainly did enjoy it. And as always, if you want to binge watch this series or want to watch another series, there's going to be a video for you to the top right now. Click it, tell the YouTube algorithm that you like this stuff. And now stay safe, everyone. Have a good time and goodbye.